out of Brazzy, and I hope you get a kick out of our broadcast. Hi, I'm Brian Heisenbottle. I am a sophomore. I play hockey. You can check out my column in the Arapahoe Herald newspaper, and you can also check me out behind the camera of the broadcasting club. Hi there. My name is Scott Ayers, and I like to make people laugh. I'm behind the glove and the camera, Hannah Ulick Jr. My name's Rick Caesar. I'm a huge sports statistics guru, and I'd love to someday work alongside Adam Schefter at ESPN. I'm Austin Lederman. You can catch me on the links. I'm Joe Graves. I enjoy long walks on the beach under the moonlight. I'm Mike Carlson. I love a nice pair of shades, and this broadcast is sure to be a home run. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Michael Carlson, joined alongside Rick Zeezer for this Sweet 16 matchup between your Lady Warriors and the Fruita Monument Wildcats. Rick, give us a breakdown of this matchup. Well, Mike, this is shaping up to be a great playoff matchup. Fruita Monument making the long trek in from all the way down in Grand Junction. We're going to take a pause for the national anthem.
Chad Neiman and Mark Quinton. These two teams are members of the Colorado High School Activities Association and by the rules and regulations set forth by Chad Neiman and the State High Standards of Conduct, Competition, and Scholarship. We cooperate with sportsmanship as players, coaches, and spectators will be expected. Welcome back to Sitting Eagle Gymnasium. The players have been introduced and they're doing their final things to get pumped up, get ready for the game. Mike, what are some of the keys to the game for this Warriors team? Well, the first key to the game is defense. These girls play a tough, old style of defense, and if they want to come out, if they want to come out, come away with a W tonight, they need to play a tough kind of defense. Rick, they only allow 36 points per game, and usually when you allow 36 points per game, odds are you're going to win. My second key to the game, these girls have a height advantage with three girls at 6'3", and this Wildcats team is very undersized with only two girls at, six, at or above six feet tall. And then my final key to the game, the charity strike. The, these girls have to get those easy points at the free throw line if they want to succeed. It bit them in the butt last time against Thunder Ridge where they could not execute at the free throw line. So if they want to win this game, they got to execute at the free throw line. That's number 23, Cassidy Fair. Pass number 42, Vanessa Herrera. Great ball movement there. Samantha Parks trying to get her team a basket here. Pass just out of the reach of Eden Lacey. And that's stolen, and it's the fast break. Savannah Nelson to Lindsey Sugo. She can't get it to fall, and the ball just off the hands of Carolyn Johnson. And that's a three from number 13, Eden Lacey. That's going to go out of bounds, and that's going to go the Warriors' direction. This Fruita Monument team has made the long trek here to Arapaho. It's a four-hour drive from their school down in Grand Junction. In fact, the school, they are closer to Salt Lake City, Utah, than they are to Arapaho. So, Mike, it'll be interesting to see how they play in this game coming off a long drive. It's one thing to play a lot of teams in your league and be on the bus a lot, but never going more than 30 minutes outside your school. But in the playoffs, we're playing teams from all around the state. And it'll be interesting to see how they shake off that long drive. And Rick, we talk, and we also see it in football too. A lot of uh, teams are usually concerned on the East Coast going from East Coast to West Coast completely. And then vice versa going from West Coast to East Coast. And it definitely affects the teams because A, you're not playing in your home stadium. And B, you're going across the country. It's a long, long plane ride, drive, whatever it is to you. So I think that it'll definitely affect them, and it'll definitely be, uh, I think how they come out in the first quarter will be a clear gauge of how they're going to play throughout this first game. Throughout this, first, throughout this game, sorry. Stacy Lucas Savage inbounding. Warriors have a two-point lead, six and a half to go here in the first quarter. Pass to Lindsey Sugo. That's going to be stolen by number 30. Lauren Labonde. Great defense by the Warriors. They're double covering the, pl the, the player with the ball. That's number 42, Vanessa Herrera moving it up. And it's going to be stolen by number 23, Stacey Lucas Savage. It's going to go out of bounds, and that's going to go the Warriors' direction. There's that aggressive defense like we saw last week in their first playoff game. Rapaho averages 14 steals per game. And that's a huge deal. It gives them more opportunities to score. And I'll tell you what, Rick, one of the major contributors, contributors to that huge steal average is number 15 captain Carly Beekler. She averages just as many steals as she does assists in a game, which is just, it's unreal. It's an amazing stat. Beekler with 66 steals on the season, and that's good enough to lead the Warriors. That's Lindsey Sugo to Stace Lucas Savage with the 10 foot J. Off the glass, Warriors are up 4 0. And Rick, like you said, this girls' team so defensively sound. They pride themselves in their defense, and their trademark of defense really is this full court press that they have throughout the game. And I'll tell you what, Rick, it is absolutely relentless, this full court press. I don't even think I could get up the court with these girls, on the, with these girls <laughs> doing the full court press against me. It's relentless, it's fierce and it is unforgiving. And we've seen how impactful that can be. Last Friday when they played Brighton, they only allowed one field goal in the first quarter. When they, when they broke to the huddle at the end of the first quarter, they had only given up three points. As a team, 
not only is that's huge for Rappo, but as the other team, that's detrimental to your morale. You're coming to the game, you want to be excited, but now you see, man, we're in the single digits, and we've only made one shot. It's hard to come back from that. And I'll tell you what, Rick, it's also detrimental to your offense. You can't get into an offensive groove when you've only made one of your attempted 20 field goals. I mean, it's tough to get into a groove, and it's tough to sustain that groove throughout the game, and that was the main reason why the Warriors were able to come away with a victory against Brighton. Number 13, Eden Lacey, trying to look it up. That tough full court press by the girls definitely affecting them getting up the court. And that's number 11, Maria Lo Mariah Love with the shot. She's going to miss it. It's going to be a push foul there by Carlin Johnson. And Fruita, and Fruita is going to retain the possession. Captain Carlin Johnson came down with that rebound at the other end of the court just a second ago. She has more than 100 rebounds on the season and had six last Friday in their first playoff game. She really, she had been a great down low threat throughout the season. And there she is knocking down another two pointer from the side. Especially last Friday, she had a larger impact. And I'll tell you what, Carlin Johnson cleaning the glass here for the Warriors is a huge, huge advantage for them against other teams. She's a big physical player down low. And anytime you can come away with a rebound and get the ball back in your possession, it's a major plus. And Rick, not only are the girls holding teams to 36 points per game, but they're also destroying other teams. Their average margin of victory, get this, 27.2 points per game. Woo! That's not one, that's not one where you grind out a victory. That's just an absolute blowout. This girl's offense and defense, so sound, firing, all, firing on all cylinders all the time, and boy, they are a treat to watch. But we expect as we get farther into the playoffs, last week they played Brighton, a little bit smaller school, not as strong a basketball program. This week they play the Wildcats. They're ranked fourth in this section of the bracket, so they're going to progressively play tougher and tougher teams. And it'll be interesting to see how they respond coming off of games where they are used to winning by 27, 30 points a game. And it'll be also interesting to see how that home field advantage is taken away from them. Because next week, games start at the Denver Coliseum, and then from then on to CU Boulder, where they will play there. And that's definitely a huge factor when you cannot have your home crowd in front of you, where you can't have as many parents come out and support you. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how they deal with having that tougher competition and that lack of home field advantage where they'll move to a neutral site. Kara Riley, number 33, taking it up court. Warriors up six to nothing. Four minutes here to go in the first quarter. Number 32, Colin Johnson drives off the backboard. She lays it in. Girls have an eight nothing lead. That's why she's a captain. We talked about her a minute ago being great defensively. Already in this game, she's gotten four of the Warriors' eight points. And here she goes again, driving it down the court. That's number 33, Kara Riley with the three. She knocks it down, Warriors are up 11-0. And Carlin Johnson steals it again. Inside to Kara Riley, she's double covered. I believe Carlin Johnson has a tick mark in almost every stat category already in this first quarter. And we're only four and a half minutes into this game too, Rick. Wow, she is just filling the stack home tonight. She's got a block, she's got a rebound. Excuse me, I'm not sure, don't believe she has a block. Typically that's the, her strongest shoot, suit. She's got a rebound, she's got an assist, she's got her own shots, she's got a steal. She is filling the stack column tonight, and that's one of the reasons she's a captain on this team. She's not only a great leader, but she is an elite player here for these Warriors. That's number 23, Cassidy Fair taking it up. Full court press affecting the Warriors. It's going to be a push, and Fruit of Monuments going to retain possession here. And Rick, we talked about it earlier, but these Fruit of Monument girls are very undersized when compared to these Arapaho girls. Warriors on the fast break, Kara Riley to Alex Beekler. She's going to miss it, but it's saved by number 55, Molly Rudolph. And Rick, going back to what I was saying, these Arapaho Warriors in the height category have an A+. They have three girls over 6'3", and many more over six feet tall, and are definitely a team where their size matters. But these Fruit of Monument girls only have two players at or above six feet tall, 
and that's definitely going to affect the game. How do you think, I mean, can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Absolutely. When they're down in the paint, like in this situation, when they're trying to pass it in, they have to throw it out deep so that they can try and pass the ball around, take outside shots like there. That's where they're going to try to beat the, beat the Warriors because they're going to struggle to go inside and go up against Molly Riedel and Michaela Moore. And they're also going to have a huge disadvantage cleaning the glass as well. I mean, it's hard to box out someone like the, some, like the Molly Riedels or the Michaela Moores of the world when they're three or four inches taller than you. And uh, really, we've seen here in the, in the basketball games we've broadcasted that rebounding is the key to the game. It's those offensive rebounds, the defensive rebounds, and really your defense as a whole that is a huge factor in this game. As Molly Riedel misses her first of two free throws, Warriors up 13-0 here. Two minutes, 45 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Number 55, Molly Riedel at the line. She's a senior who participated in National Signing Day earlier in February. And she's signed to go on and play basketball at St. Olaf College up in Northfield, Minnesota. Definitely major congrats are in order for Molly Riedel. Is anytime you can go play basketball at a college, it's just it's a big deal. And uh, it just kind of makes those hours in the gym all worth it. Fruita Monument going to retain possession there. And Rick, one thing you can guarantee here is in this second round of play for the girls, is they want to kind of exercise the curse that was on them last year where they lost here to Rapho 43 to 44 because they missed free throws as number 55 Molly Riedel steals the ball she's knocked down Warriors are going to retain possession and going back to what I was saying Rick these girls last year lost to Thunder Ridge here 44 to 43 in an absolute heartbreaker of a game so you can bet that they want to exercise kind of some of the, they want to exercise those demons move on to that uh, that great eight round and uh, kind of get the monkey off their back Number 33, Kara Riley inbounding. Pass to number four, Paige Yusa. Number 33, Kara Riley with the three. Molly Riedel with the rebound. Pass inside to Michaela Moore, but it's going to be blocked. And it's an all out sprint for the ball. But through the monument on the pass, that's going to be from number 11, Mariah Love, to number three, Samantha Parks. It's just going to be out of reach of Samantha Parks. It's going to go out of bounds, and it's going the Warriors' direction. Gotcha. Michaela Moore doing it all herself down low. Can't quite get her shots to go in, but she's still fighting for every rebound. That's what they teach you to follow your shot. She was going up. She didn't assume anything that she, oh, she's going to make it like you see some players do, and that will often burn them. She was going up and was going up to get the rebound. And it paid off. She got her Warriors the ball back. Great ball movement. Alex Beekler with the ball. Inside to Molly Riedel. Kick out to number 33, Kara Riley. Just can't get it to go as it's off the back iron. Paige Houston with the rebound. Michaela Moore with the 15-foot J. Can't get it to go. and it's gonna be out of bounds. We're closing in on one minute to play in the first quarter, and I didn't think it was possible for the Warriors defense to get much better than it did last game against Brighton in the first, to start the game. They only allowed one shot to fall in that first quarter, and so far they're impressing me still. They have not allowed a shot. Right now, Rick, like to be you made. said, right now they're pitching a shutout. Knock on wood and let's hope that they don't allow any more points here for the rest of this quarter and uh, build on their strong defense from last week. That's going to be out of reach of number 20, Shea Ray Dorsher. And the Warriors, with a minute and six, with one minute and six seconds left, are looking to put together a drive here and get some points. Kara Riley taking it up the court. That's number 11, Jenna Knoffel. Trying to get some points here for the Warriors. Pass inside of number 40, Michaela Moore. She's going to be fouled, and she is shooting two. 
and Rick, a lot of our viewers at home may, knew, may notice that the Warriors are coached by Jerry Knoffel, and out there is his daughter, number 11, Jenna Knoffel. And isn't that just a special thing to see, a dad coaching his daughter in basketball? Absolutely. And it's neat to see Jenna Knoffel only a sophomore, so she'll continue to grow not only under the leadership of her dad as the coach, but also under these girls and these seniors who are out here tonight. And I'll tell you what, Rick, for a sophomore, she is a great shooter from beyond the arc. Last week, she made three or four, she made four three-pointers in a blowout game against Brightness number 40, Michaela Moore. Since both of her free throws, wears up 15 and nothing. And uh, it's a rare combination to see a coach and his when a coach and his daughter, or a coach and his son playing, and it's really a treat as that shot is blocked by number 11, Jenna Knoffel, representing the Knoffel name really well. Kara Riley pushing the pace inside, but she get fouls on her way to a layup, and she will go to the line. And a quick update for you here, Regis Jesuit, a team in the other side of the bracket, the, the women's Regis Jesuit team on the other side of the bracket are tied with Fort Collins 9-9 nine, nine, midway through the first with the Raiders turning it over a whopping five times, Rick. That definitely cannot be helping your team. And we're going to keep you updated throughout the night on the, game, on the games going around and uh, on the Warriors' next matchup next week. Well, whoever wins this game and hopefully we'll see the Warriors, they will advance to play either number two Thunder Ridge or number six Castleview. And that game is being played concurrently over in Thunder Ridge High School. And I'll tell you what, Rick, these girls definitely want to play Thunder Ridge. Part of exercising those demons of last year and getting to beat Thunder Ridge, getting some nice sweet revenge and getting the monkey off their back. Kara Riley makes, splits her free throws there and the Warriors are up 16 to nothing. 30 seconds to go, Warriors taking it up the court. Or excuse me, Fruita Monument taking it up the court. As that was number 30, Lauren Labonde, with the drive, she's going to be hacked, and she is shooting two at the line. She's going to miss her first of two free throws there. Warriors still hold a whopping 16 to nothing lead over Fruita Monument. 22.7 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Lauren Labonde, the senior from Fruita Monument, gives the Wildcats their first point of the quarter and the first point of the game. Number 23, Stacy Lucas Savage almost goes coast to coast there. But Fruita Monument has the ball with 11 seconds to go. It's tipped. And it's going to be stolen by Michaela Moore inside to Stacey Lucas Savage. Clock at fourth, one. It's going to go the Warriors' way, Rick, with .9 seconds to go. Not much you can do in that time. Let's see what they conjure up. <laughs> Molly Riedel gets the shot off just in time. And it falls through the net as the buzzer sounds. And that gives the Warriors a commanding 18-1 to lead at the end of the first quarter. Mike, as the Wildcats go into their huddle with their first-year coach, Richard Atkins, it's got to be interesting to think, what is he going to be talking to them about? Remembering that Fruita Monument is down near Grand Junction. So they had a four-hour bus ride to come up here. You've got to manage, imagine they've been talking and thinking about the game. And they've been together for four hours. Wonder what he's thinking, knowing that, man, we've, we've been planning for this game, looking forward to it for four hours. How, how, how is he, what is he going to say to them after preparing for them to four hours about how they've come out so slow? And to answer that question and kind of put him on the spot, I'm joined by my friend and partner, Austin Wieneman. And Austin, as I was, we were wrapping up the first quarter, I was talking to Mike and just wondering, Fruit of Monument, we know they came from Grand Junction, so a long bus ride. They've come out pretty slow, obviously putting up one point in the first quarter. Got to wonder what their coach is telling him about. I'm sure he's been talking to them throughout the bus ride a little bit. And it's got to be tough that we, you think you've had all this time to prepare with your team, and now you've got to come up with something new to pick them up. Indeed, Rick, you know, 
it's kind of tough for a team to start off in the first quarter just scoring one point. So he has to try to build some confidence with his team in that huddle and try to see if they can get something going for Fruita Monument. Jenna Knoffel goes inside. Car Carlin Johnson with the rebound, but her layup is not good. Wildcats will take their first possession of the second quarter, and it's stopped before it even gets past the half court line. Jenna Knoffel showing off her jumping ability there and gets blocks the pass. But and that turns the ball over for the Warriors. That's a good thing to see. Warriors are playing some great defense tonight and getting some good turnovers all night. So hope they can keep that up. Lucas Savage from three is no good off the back of the rim. Now it's Jenna Knoffel's turn, but she can't knock it through. Yet the Warriors using that aggressive play and they still have the ball back. Indeed, Rick, and they're using their height advantage a little bit tonight to get some of them to rebound because Fruity Monument only has one, two players that are six foot, and we have three players over six three, so we have to use that to our advantage. Stacy Lucas Savage knocks in the layup for two. The Warriors are over 20 points for the game. Sam Parks going to the basket hard. But her shot is no good, and Knoffel on the other side of the court. Her layup is good. And the Warriors, everything seems to be falling for them tonight that the Wildcats can't quite get. Indeed, Rick, we're playing some great offense and some great defense right now. Uh, it's obvious that we're playing some great defense. We've only scored one point, knock on wood. And uh, de offense, we're making some shots that we haven't, that usually wouldn't go in, and it's working out good for us tonight. Junior Cassidy Fair will be at the free throw line for the Wildcats. Rick, if you haven't noticed, uh, there, uh, Fruita Monuments star player Lauren Labonde seems to be limping out there on the court. She was crying in the uh, huddle when it, after the first quarter there, and she seems to be grabbing her ankle a little bit. So hopefully Fruita Monument uh, doesn't lose uh, their star player. Lauren Labonde is not only the team leader in points, but also the team leader in steals. So losing number 30 would be a knock not only on offense, but also on defense. Indeed, Rick, and Fruitamani can't, uh, can't really take that right now, especially because they're down by 19 points. So they need something, uh, somebody uh, to come in big for them. Seems to be a little confusion on the court right now between the referees. They're making everything is worked out the right way. One ref is talking to the scorer's table. One is talking to Richard Atkins, the Wildcats coach. Rick, what do you think? Uh, Fruit of Monuments head coach, uh, what's going through his head right now seeing his team's down by 19 points? Well, he's got to be looking for anything that he can find. But like we talked about with the long drive, I'm sure he's gone through a lot of things in his head as he was coming into this game. He is a first-year coach for the, these teams, so it's his first year with the team. First year likely in a playoff situation. Probably trying to test out, come up with new ideas about well, what can we test out here? What can we do that will give our team the spark that we need? Indeed, Rick. And it's kind of special to see a first-year coach in the playoffs. You don't really see that very often, especially making it into the Sweet 16 in basketball. You don't get to see that very often. So it's pretty special for him. Rappahoe, quite the momentum in, in that first quarter, getting taking up such a large lead. We've got kind of a lull in the action. It'll be interesting to see if they can rebound and come back and pick up that fast pace that they left off at or if maybe the Wildcats will finally get a chance to 
come back. Indeed, this can definitely slow down some uh, momentum as you and me saw in the Super Bowl, uh, the lights going out in uh, the yes. Superdome there, and that kind of took away the Ravens' momentum and kind of gave a spark to the 49ers. So hopefully, uh, for, or not the 49ers, sorry, uh, the Warriors can not really let that get to them uh, and keep this momentum going because it's working for them right now. You're right, the Ravens were coming off a 100-yard kick return. Yes. Biggest play you can make in football. Yep. 100 yards, the full length of the court, and then the lights go out. And in this case, in this game, something's wrong on the in the scorer's table or there's confusion yep. among the coaches. And, and Rick, if, if you don't mind me uh, correcting you, in football it's a field, not a court. I know you're kind of in the <laughs> basketball mood right now, but it Thank is you. indeed a field instead of a court. <laughs> <laughs> But after that, we saw the 49ers come out strong and make it much closer a game. A game that many people thought, oh, the Ravens are going to run away with this one. Indeed. We'll see Carlin Johnson taking free throws on their side of the court all by herself. Everyone else is beyond the half, the mid-court line. Rick, this so is because gonna... of a technical foul at Fruita Monument. Uh, guess play on the last play and Repo gets to take the ball back after those two made free throws there so that kind of helps the Warriors gain I guess get some of their momentum back knowing that they can still make some shots after that long break and they're gain their lead a little bit so we're back in action Carlin Johnson with the steal Passing it around, Savannah Nelson from inside. Her shot can't quite go in. And Carlin Johnson's shot is rejected. And the Wildcats have another possession. Sam Parks' shot takes two bounces off the backboard. <laughs> Got a lot of backspin on that one, but it wasn't quite enough to fall through. No, it wasn't, Rick. You don't see that very often, so it was kind of cool to see there. That was fun. Keeps you in suspense. You watch the shot go up and then up again. Indeed, it seems almost like slow motion. You're just seeing the ball go up, almost rewinding it, seeing it again, seeing if it was gonna go in, and <laughs> just didn't quite go in. Wildcats struggling to knock down shots. We have five and a half minutes left in the first half. You know, Rick, I think I've been watching uh, when you and DJ were talking. I think the Warriors are having a lot of success over Fruita Monument because they're passing the ball around a lot. And something Fruita Monument hasn't been doing in this game is passing the ball around. So that might, that might need to change for some of their shots to drop. And that was two points there for Arapaho, number 44, Savannah Nelson. Labonde playing point guard. Looking for some room to work. Down the baseline. Martinez gets a shot off, but she is fouled. And she will have two free throws. Like I said, Rick, for the moment, definitely needs to start passing the ball around. And some of that is, has to put, be put on uh, Lauren Labonde's shoulders because she is the point guard, and usually point guards in basketball are supposed to pass the ball around as Fruita Monument missed their first free throw. But back to what I was saying... They got to pass the ball around. Point guards, anywhere you see in NBA, college, they're, ha they're always passing the ball around. They're not greedy. And, uh, Lauren Labonda definitely needs to start doing that. Second free throw there was knocked down by Mar uh, Martinez. Lucas Savage bringing it down the court. Lindsay, Lindsay Sugo handling the ball. And there we go again. I can't keep up. Warriors passing it all around. And it finishes with a Carlin Johnson layup. Like I said, Rick, passing the ball is the key to this game right now. And Warriors are doing that, and they're making a lot of shots. And it's helping them not be able to take good high percentage shots. They're not having to take wild, wild three-pointers or kind of off-balance shots. They're good about passing it around and waiting until they can get that in close in layup indeed rick and layup is pretty easy i'll take a layup any day over a three-pointer if you can get two points instead of 
throwing up a three-pointer and hoping it's going to go in. So two points is always a good thing to have. Especially with the, such a large league, they just, such a large lead. They just keep plugging along, keep adding to that. Wildcats not able to keep up. No. Lucas Savage wide open from downtown, but it's not good. Mariah Love working with Carly Beekler, trying to find get the ball up court. Beekler is called for a foul. Junior Mariah Love at the free throw line. She makes her first shot. Her second won't fall. But Star Hunter down there for the layup. But again, the Wildcats can't get their shots to fall. You see this stat in some other sports, it's time of possession. I think it'd be very hard to calculate for basketball because of how quickly the ball moves moves hands. But I, I find that I've been sitting the same direction, looking over at Arapahoe's side of the court much for much more of this game. Indeed, Rick, they have definitely been holding on to the ball. I guess not really holding on to the ball, but had the ball in it's their exactly hands. Exactly the opposite, passing the ball around. Indeed. But it's all stayed on their side but of the court. But it's always, yes, they seem to be getting the rebounds, keep passing the ball around, just looking for open shots, just not taking errant shots, just trying to put a, put some points up on the board. Molly Riedel is good for two. And the Warriors have cracked 30 points. Cassidy Fair dribbling goes down to the ground, but keeps dribbling, is able to stand back up. Just steps out of bounds, and the Warriors, once again, will take control of the ball. Yeah, Rick, their defense has been forcing Fruita Monument really, I don't know, not necessarily out of bounds all the time, but it seems to be like that because they have lost the ball because of stepping out of bounds or throwing the ball out of bounds off of a pass. They really need to slow down and stop uh, making mistakes like that. I mentioned this to Michael in the first quarter. And I'll, I'll update it for the, after the two quarters. Last Friday against the Brighton Bulldogs, the Warriors led 35-6. to six. And I thought that was a huge margin. And I was not expecting, I expected this game to be closer. But they're besting that right now. They've held the Wildcats to only five points. Indeed, and then I said this last week on our broadcast too. The Warriors are playing tough defense, showing that they're not afraid to play full court press and maybe give up a point or two here and there but like that they just get when a nice pays steal. off with an easy layup Kara Riley bringing it to the house indeed and it just shows that they're not scared of playing nice tough basketball it's kind of fun to watch because uh, a lot of teams when they're high ranked like the Warriors are number one they play some soft defense and that's when you see update uh, or upsets sorry in college basketball all the time so it's kind of fun to see the Warriors not being scared of it and Fruita Monument not a bad team in their own right they came into this game with an 18 and 6 record that's a very strong high winning record they come in with a number four ranking but the Warriors have just shut them down tonight Alex Beekler with the steal, but she is knocked down. And Sam Parks brings the ball to the, all the way to the Wildcats side of the court. The ball's going back and forth. At the end of that play, it, that seems perfect that it ended that way. Alex Beekler ended with the layup after Indeed. being the one who got the steal that started the back-to-back. -back. Mm -hmm. Another shot can't, doesn't fall for the Wildcats. And senior Alex Beekler, another layup. 
Under two minutes to play in the second quarter. From three point range, Lace is no good. Alex Beaker has been playing pretty big for Arapahoe in this game and really all season. She's shown that she's a good basketball player just like her sister Carly Beekler, who's also on the team who's a captain. And she's really stepped up for the Warriors this year and it's really paid off for her and the team. Number 33, Kara Riley for Arapahoe on the free throw line makes the first of two. And she makes her second of two. Minute 30 seconds left in the first half. The Wildcats looking for anything that will give them a little momentum going into the locker room. Labonde bringing it up court. And Martinez finishes. Yeah, and the Wildcats definitely need to find some momentum somehow to keep themselves in this game here because it's really starting to run away from them. There's a steal, but the Warriors get it right back. Molly Riedel throws up an errant shot, but she was hit as she was throwing it up. It's not her fault, and she will now get two free throws in reward for that. And Rick, when you're a center in basketball, sometimes like uh, Molly Riedel did right there. When you're down low in the paint and you're that tall, you gotta just gotta throw up a shot because most of the time you're gonna get fouled and hopefully two points, uh, easy two points off of that. So, like she got there, the Warriors are now at 40 points. They lead 40 to seven over the Fruita Monument Wildcats. Sam Parks three-pointer goes in and out of the hoop. Ball rolls out of bounds. And like I said, Rick, Fruit of Monument has to hold on to the ball. They can't let the ball keep going out of bounds and have aired passes, and that's really hurting them during this game. Kara Riley, some impressive ball work there, and she's tripped because of how many fouls the Wildcats have accumulated, she will get free throws for that as well. Yeah, and she will get two free throws instead of one and one. When you get to 10, free th or ten fouls, uh, you get to shoot two instead of one and one when there is seven fouls. And the Wildcats in a desperate position here already down by more than 30 points. So they're going to have to play a little more of an aggressive style of, of defense. And just that comes with that. Fouls come with as a part of it. And you'll have to risk giving up those, giving up, giving the other team those easy shots. That was a foul there by Kara Riley, and so the Wildcats will now go and shoot one and one on the free throw line because they are in eight fouls. Jenny Snedden, the senior, knocks down her first. And she will get the second. I'm sure the Wildcats are taking any free shots they can. Indeed, Rick. They need any free shots that they can. With 42 seconds left in the second quarter, Wildcats are still in single digit scoring. Whereas the Warriors up to 41 points. And Rick, we said this last week, it's kind of, don't see it very often, uh, knock on wood single digits in the first half in a playoff game. Uh, that's really rare to see college, NBA, anything. WNBA, whatever league they're in, it's tough to see single digits in the first quarter. Especially you wouldn't expect it here. They're in, we're in the sweet, into the sweet 16. It's starting to get exciting around the bracket. Mm -hmm. The Warriors having no trouble making their way through. And they're showing that they our team that lost last year in the second round and really wants to get into that finals and show that they are a team to contend with. 
and they're showing that tonight by only by putting up 41 points in the first half. Lauren Labonde, the Wildcats' leading scorer, knocks down her two free throws. Clock ticks under 30 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Jenna Knoffel going behind the back, bringing it up the court. And Alex Beekler from deep range, in and out of the hoop. And Alex Beekler is kind of a Repo's specialty three-point shooter. She's had 31 uh, three-point shots made this uh, year coming into this game. And so her taking a three doesn't really make Mr. Kn uh, Coach Knoffel uh, nervous at all. They're okay with her taking a three-pointer because she's made quite a few of them over the season. Uh, <laughs> 93 points, just three pointers is pretty wow, pretty good. Huge addition to any game. Yep. Octavia Martinez at the line. The clock down at five seconds, three seconds, two, one. Jenna Knopfel going to go all the way to the hoop, and her layup gets in before the buzzer sounds. And that will bring us to halftime with the Warriors. That was some pretty good ball work there by Jenna Knopf. That was pretty cool to see yeah. a little sophomore like that going up against an entire defense, Rick. And very and aware, right through them. Very aware of the clock. It's one thing to do that and weave through the defenders Indeed. during the game, but knowing she's got five seconds on the clock to get up and get the shot off. That was crazy. That, that was like seeing Jose King Cannon during football season go right up the middle and somehow find a hole and score a touchdown. That was pretty cool to see there by Jenna Canoffo. That will send us to halftime with the Warriors leading here at City Eagle Gymnasium, 43 to 12. Now turn it over to the court. We're handful of the fans will now get a chance to come out and shoot the basketball themselves with a little knockout competition.
And we're back here at Sitting Eagle Gymnasium here. Start of the third quarter, the Warriors lead 43 to 12. And Rick Zeezer, like I was saying it during time, or uh, during the second quarter, the Warriors have been very successful passing the ball around, um, really holding on to the ball, not turning it over all the time. And Fruita Monument during this game has been turning it over a lot and hasn't been taking good shots, hasn't been passing the ball around kind of been playing selfish uh, basketball, and they really need to turn that around if Wildcats want to stay in this game. Oh, it's all added up. I'm not sure I would call it selfish per se, but I just think they need to start taking shots. Indeed. That's, that's part of what will come with. If you're down by 31 points as the Wildcats are, you're going to need players to start stepping up and taking threes. Indeed, and they might need, the Fruit of Money might need uh, Lauren Labonde, their leading scorer, uh, to maybe step up. Labonde typically averages 12.2 points per game. That's the total that the Wildcats have gotten in this one first half. Carlin Johnson, senior, put knocks in the layup for the first points of the second half. Carlin's had a huge presence this game so far. She's a captain on the team. Lindsay Sugo bringing it down the court for a layup. We talked about Carlin Johnson a lot earlier in the game, how she's contributed in all aspects of it with blocks, with rebounds, with assists, with her own points. She's really stepped up. And Rick, I was just flipping around after I said that Laura Labonde is going to have to step up for Fruita Monument here. Uh, I have, I don't see Lauren. Oh, there she walks into the gym right now, but she is not starting uh, the third quarter for these Fruita Monument Wildcats. So that's an interesting uh, sight to see. Uh, maybe there's something that really is wrong with her. Yes. Because we did see her limping around in that second quarter there and didn't really, I guess we haven't seen her, but didn't seem like herself on the court there. You're right, Austin. That's part of the Wildcats. While they may miss some shots, they will have to be other players that step up, players that may not typically have as high a shooting percentage. Only one other Wildcat averages more than 10 points per game, and that's number three, Sam Parks. Kind of a neat little backstory to Parks. A little more than a year ago, she actually went through back surgery. And that's gotta be detrimental to any athlete, and no matter what sport you're playing, your back is what holds you up and is the backbone, literally, to you as a player. Indeed, and that was a layup there by Carla Buechler uh, for two. But back to what you were saying there, Rick. It's, it is definitely tough to come back from, I, I mean, a back surgery. That's got to be tough to do. Uh, my grandpa broke his back a few years ago, and it was tough for him to even get back to walking and jogging all the time. I mean, he works out all the time, and it was tough for him. So I, I have to believe it was tough for her to come back. Absolutely, but come back she has. You said she averages double digits scoring for Fruita Monument. She has 80 rebounds on the season. Indeed, and that's good for her coming back after that surgery. It's tough to do. Uh, that's a pretty cool thing for her to do, though. She's enjoying a great senior season. She is shooting at the free throw line and knocks down her first. She is good on both of her three, three throws. The Wildcats trying any way they can to inch closer to pull this game into reach. The way the Warriors were, have been shooting and moving the ball around and rebounding every aspect of the game, they have beat out the Wildcats. They have indeed. A no, nice two jumper from number by 44, Savannah Nelson. And like you're Didn't saying, steal right? that from you. <laughs> you're good. Uh, but like you're saying, Rick, they have been dominating in all aspects. Uh, turning the ball, or not, having the team turn the ball over. 
uh, getting rebounds, blocking shots, making baskets from all over the court. It's really been working for the Warriors tonight, and this has to make them feel good going into the grade eight, as what the high school calls it, not the elite eight. Um, but yeah, it has to make them feel good going into the grade eight, and hopefully the final four in the finals. Sophomore Taylor Eatwell at the line for the Wildcats. That shot's nothing but net, but it's only one point. Warriors working the ball around, and Michaela Moore is able to find open space down low by the basket. Like I keep saying, Rick, the Warriors are moving the ball around, passing it to each other, and they keep finding open lanes. Food and Monument is going to have to do that if they want to stay in this game. Back to the Warriors' possession. Lindsay Sugo stretches her back as much as she can, but she couldn't quite come down with that pass. Sam Parks bringing the ball up the court. She goes all the way up the middle and does it herself. Her layup is worth two points. You see her coming out as the point guard. Maybe she will start to try and lead this team. Wildcats passing it around, breaking the Warriors' press. Getting the ball close down by their hoop. Eden Lace knocks down her two-pointer. Rick, those last few Fruit of Monument points there was showing really that they are starting to pass the ball around and making some open lanes uh, for people to get into, and they've been making some shots. They need to keep doing that in this game to stay in. Kara Riley misses, and Eden Lace hanging down on the other end of the court. Finally gets a shot up, and it's off the glass and into the hoop. Rick is kind of looking maybe a little too relaxed coming out of the locker room there after halftime. And Fruit and Monument's kind of taking advantage of it and scoring a few points, trying to get back in it. Again, the senior Eden Lace, the one starting the offensive possession for the Wildcats. She gets the ball to Sam Parks, but Parks' layup is no good. She was fouled on the way up, and she will take two free throws. Their game on Friday in the second round versus Brighton High School, the Warriors did give up more points in the second half. They gave up double digits in each of third and fourth quarters. But, and they kind of seemed to do that here. They kind of let up the gas on their full court press just enough that Wildcats have got a little bit of offense going. But against Brighton, it didn't, they didn't ever have to worry. They led that whole time and ended up winning by 40 points. They seem to be in the similar situation here. Indeed, like you said, they kind of they're not in their full court press anymore. They're not playing as tight as D as they were in that first half. And uh, Food Monuments taking advantage of it a little bit, uh, but uh, hopefully the Warriors can hold on to their lead. Shouldn't have too much trouble. They are up 40 points with two minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. 
of seemed like there had been an unnecessary number of fouls early in this third quarter. There's no reason for the Warriors to be fouling or worrying too much about getting on top of every shot to the extent that they're going to foul and give the Wildcats free throws. Indeed, Rick. And, you know, when they're up 39 points, you don't really need to be fouling or trying to get up in their face and block a ton of shots. You just got to if give them a few baskets here and there, but keep it out of the foul range because that could hurt you at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. That will only hurt the Warriors if the Wildcats are strong field goal free throw, excuse me, or if the Wildcats are strong free throw shooters. And Sam Parks missed both of hers. Again, the ball points the Warriors' direction. Excuse me, excuse me, Fruta's direction. Yeah, Rick, there's been a few aired passes by the Warriors uh, right now, but hopefully they can uh, get back in the swing of things and uh, not turn the ball over so fast. Wildcats passing the ball around more here. The Warriors swarming whoever's got the ball. Wildcats struggling to get a shot off. Michaela Moore goes up for the big block. She's called for a foul. And Rick, I got a little scoring update for you. Uh, the Thunder Ridge and Castleview game, which is who we will be playing next in the grade eight. Uh, Thunder Ridge is down 25 to 35 uh, against Castleview with three minutes to go in the third. So uh, that's something we'll definitely be keeping our eyes, our eyes on during this, the rest of this game. Thunder Ridge and Castleview, both strong teams, a little bit closer by or around the Met Denver area, but Thunder Ridge came into that game the number two seed and Castleview the number six seed. So that would be a little, be an upset there. Indeed, they would definitely will not have to make a four-hour drive to get down to the Denver Coliseum. <laughs> uh, that's a really long drive, and I kind of feel bad for those Fruita Monument girls. That's something worth mentioning again. Fruita Monument's down near Grand Junction, Colorado. In fact, it's closer to Salt Lake City, Utah, than it is to Arapahoe. You've got to wonder if that played into them into this game a little bit. If they're maybe if they're fatigued from being having such a long trek up here or if they struggled to get loosened, loosened up after finally being able to stretch their legs after a four-hour drive. Indeed, Rick. That may account for some of their slow start in this game. Indeed, and I don't know if you've been on a really long car ride, but I've driven all the way up to South Dakota, and that's a really long car ride. <laughs> a little bit more than four hours, but uh, I've done my legs, that myself plenty yeah, of times. My legs definitely get uh, tired just sitting in a car for that long. It's tough to... Uh, I don't know. I don't know how the how the girls are doing right now. It's tough to play basketball after that long long of a car ride. And it's not like a professional team where you can show up the night before. I mean, these girls are coming from school. Indeed. They've probably got their books on the bus. They're working on some homework. And it'll be interesting. I'd be curious to know how they're when they go back. Whether they go back tonight. That would be a long night, and then having to go to school tomorrow morning. Indeed, Rick, they probably had to get let out of a few classes. Definitely. Uh, trying to get down here for their game. and uh, not, They were able to pull it a little bit closer. That was Jenna Knoffel with the layup. If they were able to pull it a little bit closer, it might make the trip a little more worth, worth, worthwhile. Jenny Snedden will inbound the pass, inbound the ball for the Wildcats. Well, nope. She would be rotated out and replaced by Dorsher. Michelle Star Hunter passing it back to Dorsher. Rappo not giving the Wildcats any opening. 
Time out there taken by Fruita Monument. And Rick, I've been noticing something uh, just there in that last possession there for uh, the Wildcats, but they aren't really spreading out their offense. They're all kind of, all five of them are kind of bunched up in one small half of the court. Uh, they need to spread it out so they can get passes like Arapaho has been getting all game uh, to really uh, help them out and get a cut into this lead. Absolutely. 45 seconds left in the third period. Warriors up by almost 40 points. Rick, I gotta ask a question. Have you ever seen a playoff game uh, with one team dominating by 40 points? Because I, I sure haven't. Not that I can remember, especially not a game in the Sweet 16. Indeed. This Warrior team is poised to make a run deep into the playoffs. They came in with the number one seed. They've only lost two games on the season. And they're not looking to add to that number. Sam Parks with a little jumper from the middle of the paint. And another missed shot for the Wildcats. They just haven't been able to knock down anything. Indeed, Rick. It seems like the basketball hoop doesn't like them tonight. they kind of been going in and out all the time, hitting the front of the rim, back of the rim. Nothing's been falling for them. Alex Beekler showing why she's the leading three-point shooter for the Arapaho Warriors team. Knocks down that three to give the Warriors a clean 40-point lead. And Rick, a little stat update for Alex Pico there. She now has 96 points off of three-pointers. That's a pretty impressive stat for anybody, uh, and especially playing in a, as good of a league as Arapaho is in for uh, who, I don't know, what they're playing in. It's kind of fun to show. And that was number three, uh, Samantha Parks knocking down her first of two free throws. And she knocks down her second one. Jenna Knopf with the inbound there. Her three-pointer just off. And that'll send the Warriors into the fourth quarter. With the Warriors leading 66 to 28 over Fruita Monument. So my mom, right now, she's got the first part of the game online. It's the first part of the game that scores and the zero in Rappahoe. And it's happened at the other game, too. Why is that? I'm now being joined here for the last quarter of play with my good friend, uh, Michael Carlson. And uh, Michael, uh, through this game, the Warriors have really dominated uh, over Fruit and Monument, and they've been showing some great offense and defense. Um, what do you think Fruit and Monument has to do in this last quarter to... Before I answer that question, let's take a look at the bracket. Oh. Which is on our screen. Now, cool new function we have. And if you look on that bracket, going forward, the girls, in order to get to the final four, will have to play Thunder Ridge or Castleview. And then after that, there's a bunch of different com combinations you can go through. But really, they need to be focused on that next game. And that next game could either be Thunder Ridge or Castleview, as we're getting updates constantly from that game. And there seems to be no clear, um, there seems to be no team seemed to have a clear advantage in that game. Indeed, DJ, that game's been going back and forth really the entire time we've been watching it. Uh, but like I was saying, what, is, what do you think Freedom Monument has to do here in this fourth quarter, even though they're down by 38 points? What are they going to have to do to maybe cut into this lead and uh, make it look a little bit better in the paper? Well, you have to solve the puzzle that is 
Coach Knoffel's full court press, Austin. This full court press is devastating and it's unforgiving. And so far, no one's been able to stop it. We've seen a bunch of teams try to get around it. They may have cured it for a couple, of, for maybe a couple of minutes, but they haven't been able to stop this full court press. And I think that if these girls want to put some more points up on the board, they have to solve this very complicated, very complex full court press. If, they want to even have a chance to get back in this game. Indeed, and we saw that full court press against Brighton uh, in Friday's game, and it seemed to work really well for the Warriors. Uh, only Brighton only scoring, uh, what was it? Brighton only scoring 28 points. 28 points. Thank you, DJ. But that kind of shows that their defense has really been working for them, and I hope Coach Knopfel does not back off of that defense because... It is a big success for them right now. Oh, definitely. It's a huge success. And that's one of the main reasons that they're ahead by so much right now. It's that full court press. It's so aggressive and it's so unforgiving that there's no way to get around it. I mean, the only way to do that would be to play aggressive offense. And not a lot of teams can play that for a sustained game. They can maybe do it for half a quarter, maybe even a full quarter if they have the stamina there. But it's impossible to do it all four quarters of play. Indeed, DJ. And there was a jump ball there while we were talking, and it'll be going through the Monument's way. But looking forward, or looking ahead for the Warriors, they're going to have a tough opponent in either Thunder Ridge or Castleview. What do you think they're, they need to do to maybe seal a win there? Well, Thunder Ridge is definitely the one that these girls have circled on the schedule. Thunder Ridge last year, as we remember, beat them 44 to 43 in an absolute heartbreaker here at Arapaho. That is right, so you DJ. you can bet these Arapaho girls want to exercise those demons of the past, kind of break the curse, and come away with a win, of, come away with a win over Thunder Ridge, get that monkey off their back, and hopefully go straight to a championship. And another quick update for you. Thunder Ridge is losing to Castleview 37-39 uh, after the third quarter. So that is a very close game. We'll definitely be uh, keeping updated on that score. Great ball movement here. Lindsey Sugo with the three. Just going to miss it as it's off the inside iron of the basket. That's number 33, Jenny Sneedon, Sneedon taking it up court. Pass inside to Lindsey Sugo. Back inside to Stacy Lucas Savage. Out to Carly Beekler. She shoots a three, just going to be off the mark, bounces off the front of the rim. And it's going to go the direction for the Wildcats. And Austin, what a great game here we've seen tonight. Both teams really coming out and really playing well. Matt, major props to this Fruita Monument team having a four-hour drive down here and still coming up and still showing, showing up really well for, uh, for their team and representing their school really well. But you just can't solve this tough Arapaho offense and this extremely fast-paced Arapaho defense. You can, you know, me and Rick were talking earlier that four-hour drive uh, for uh, Fruit of Monument has to be tough on them, uh, especially because they're going to have to skip a little bit of school, which isn't normal for them. Uh, four hours in a bus is tough to do for, I mean, anything before a game, just going up there for a little field trip or something. Uh, it's tough to do anyway, so these Fruit of Monument girls are showing that they aren't afraid. And we see that in the NFL, I brought it up earlier, in the NFL and in Major League Baseball, when teams go on a West Coast road trip that normally play on the East Coast, we see their performance dip down a little bit because they're so used to that East Coast time zone and that East Coast uh, style of, that, and their East Coast routine that when they go to the West Coast, when they move, when they move forward three full hours, that it's tough for them to adjust. It's tough for them to get new routine. And we see that translate onto the baseball field pretty easily or the football field. Yeah, you know, like me and Rick were saying too, a lot of those professional teams get one day usually before they play uh, to stay in that city, kind of maybe get used to the air, uh, get their legs kind of back underneath them. Uh, and these Fruit of Monument girls didn't get that one day of, I guess, rest to get their legs underneath them. And it's, it's kind of tough to do that, especially playing a game uh, right after that ride. So props to these uh, Freedom Monument girls for coming here and putting on their best effort. Definitely a tough and long drive for them, but, can, but major props to them for just showing up and playing a competitive game against these Warriors. It's 66 to 28 here. Warriors up big time. 
with five minutes here to go in the fourth quarter. Warriors have a dominating lead, looking to move on to that great eight bracket, Austin, which will be at the Denver Coliseum. Yeah. And boy, is that going to be a treat for the girls just to go to the Denver Coliseum, to go to the big locker room. It's just going to be awesome. Indeed, that's kind of fun to do. Uh, just really play in an actual uh, stadium instead of your home court where you practice all the time. Uh, it, it's kind of fun to go to a different area and f see how it kind of feels, the different atmosphere. Uh, it'll be fun for these girls to go there. That's number 10, Alex Beekler with a three. She's going to miss it. Number 44, Savannah Nelson fouled on the way up, and she is shooting two. And a quick score update for you. The Thunder Ridge girls have taken the lead 40-39 to 39 with 6 minutes and 45 seconds to go. So, Austin, we can bet that that game is definitely going to come down to the wire. And we want to give a quick shout-out to Adam Branzi for that update there. He's been giving us updates throughout the entire night. He's got a lot of connections around the greater Colorado area. So, uh, congrats. Shout-out to Adam there. Savannah Nelson makes her second of two free throws. Warriors up 40 here. Four minutes, 40 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. And Austin, there it is, more of that tough, physical, full-court press. Just a tough, physical style of defense that you don't really see in basketball in general. We really see defenses like that more in football where people are getting pushed around, people are getting knocked around. But it's really refreshing to see it in baseball, or to see it in basketball, sorry. Now I'm going to correct myself here. I keep calling Michael uh, DJ. Sorry for that. That's his nickname here around school. But I will definitely have to get better at that, calling you Michael instead of DJ. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's okay. So many people call me DJ that it's, uh, it's second nature for me to respond to it. So no worries about it. Warriors up big time here, 70 to 28. Three minutes, 50 seconds here to go in the fourth quarter. That's going to be number 44 for the Brighton Wildcats. Michelle Starr Hunter with the and one there. She's shooting one here to give her Brighton Bulldogs 29 points. Excuse me, 31 points. DJ, I asked Rick this question earlier. Uh, how many playoff games, more Sweet 16 games, have you seen a team been up by 50 points? I haven't seen a lot, to tell you the truth. And it, that is just a testament to how great this Arapahoe team is. They blow out teams by 25 points or more a game on average. They hold teams to 37 to 36 points per game on average. I'm telling you, and they've held teams, Austin, on top of all of that, to less than 1,000 points on the year. And we are 23 games into the season. That is truly a spectacular, spectacular stat to have in your favor. And it's just a testament to how dominant these Warriors are and how next level this offense and defense is. Indeed, and Rapaho is nine points above their scoring average tonight. Uh, their normal scoring average is 61 points per game. So obviously the Warriors are shooting pretty well tonight, and they've had great success passing the ball around, feeding it to every one on the court. It's been a great sight to see. Oh, it's been an amazing sight to see. And isn't that just a testament to how great Jerry Canoffel is as a coach as Kara Riley sinks two uh, as Kara Riley sinks both of her two free throws there. Jerry Canoffel Austin has a coach 56 and 15. And for those of you not with a calculator at home, that's a seven, a .789 winning percentage. And Austin, anytime you have a .789 winning percentage, you know you're an elite coach. Indeed, he has definitely turned this girls uh, basketball program around. And I'm not gonna let him take all the credit. These girls are pretty good bunch of uh, girls. Uh, they've been together for a long time. Uh, it's it's fun to see a group like that get uh, come together. And w another scoring update here for you. We're keeping a close eye on this uh, Thunder Ridge Castleview game. But Thunder Ridge is up now, 45 to 43, with five minutes left. So we will definitely keep our eye on that one. Arapahoe moving the ball around. And like you said, Austin, the basketball coaches here at Arapahoe are really a, are cut from a special cloth. Jerry Canoffel, .789 as a coach here with a, win, with a winning percentage of .789. And then look at Coach Dan Snyder. Over 115 wins here as the Arapahoe head coach. I'll tell you what, these coaches here at Arapahoe are just something above and beyond. They are something really special. Indeed, they have both turned Arapahoe's basketball programs around. Uh, I'm going to give props to Dan Snyder. He's brought 
Couple teams in the finals. Uh, one last year, uh, disappointing loss with a tip in uh, against Chaparral. But you know, he has turned this Rapaho team around and so has Jerry Canoffa with this girls team. He's brought them to playoffs for two straight years now uh, and shows that his coaching is definitely paying off. And really, it's a rarity in high school sports for a high school just to have one elite level coach. Here at Arapaho, we have three plus elite level coaches. We have Jerry Canoffa, we have Dan Snyder, and then we also have Mike Campbell, who led his Warriors to the to the Elite Eight last year in football. So it's really just a treat for these Arapaho fans who come out here and they come out and support these teams day after day, night after night. And uh, these coaches reward them with victories. Indeed, and Mike Campbell took the Warriors to a Super Six League Championship, which is a really tough league, uh, Columbine and Mullen in that, uh, which that's pretty special for this high school because those two are definitely the powerhouses of Colorado football. So that was fun to watch this year and get to announce DJ or Michael uh, during the season. So it was fun to watch. It was definitely a lot. It was definitely a lot of fun to watch. Warriors up 76 to 30 here. Minute 50 to go. Game in its waning minutes. Warriors are up big time by 46 points. Just looking to close out the game here and start their trek to the championship. And Rick, Rick, gosh, Michael, uh, what are Warriors going to have to bring to the, with them to the uh, Elite Eight and hopefully the Final Four and Finals to keep their winning streak going uh, and their success going? What are they going to have to do? to stop these other uh, powerful teams. Well, I'm going to tell you what, it's more of the same thing we've talked about all the time here. It's that elite, tough, unforgiving defense and that highly high-octane, fast-paced offense. As long as they can keep that up and they can keep doing the same things that they do and keep doing the fundamentals, keep, make it, keep executing your rebounds, keep making your free throws. I think these girls are primed. I'm telling you, Austin, they are primed for a championship run. Indeed, and hopefully the girls don't make all their baskets tonight as the score is now 78 to 30 with a minute left in the game. Hopefully they'll keep some of these baskets uh, for the upcoming games. Uh, but like you said, they are. They are primed and ready to go. They definitely, definitely want to uh, get into that game. And I'll tell you what, Austin, this Arapo offense and defense isn't very flashy. They're mostly the same thing. These, these Arapaho girls aren't very flashy with their offense or with their defense. It's just the same old fundamental defense and offense that we've seen for ages. And really, it's just a testament to showing that when it comes down to the fundamentals, nothing can beat them. No spread offense, no fast break offense can really beat the basics. Indeed. And they have definitely been showing the basics by passing the ball around, not being selfish, just trying to find an open lane. If there's not an open lane, then keep passing the ball. And you'll sooner or later find one. And it's really paid off for the Warriors tonight. And basketball these days has become a sport such about me. We focus more on people's, on players' single accolades rather than the team's accolades. I mean, you look at the All-Star game. Adidas designed jerseys for the All-Star starters that have their accolades pinned on them. And uh, it's really refreshing to see these girls be very unselfish with the basketball. And it's a treat here as the clock Ticks down. Three, two, one. This game is over. You can lock it in the final of this one. 78 to 32. And ladies and gentlemen, these Warriors are going to the Denver Coliseum, Austin. What a special treat indeed. Indeed. And Rick, going back to what you were saying about the All-Star game, uh, maybe the Warriors are showing that you don't really need star players to be a good basketball team. You just need to be a good team, fundamental-wise, pass the ball around. Uh, have success. Amen to that, brother. We're going to wrap it up here in the final 78 to 32 for, for Rick Caesar. I'm Michael Carlson. Also for, our, for Adam Ramsey and Scott Ayers. I'm Michael Carlson. I'm Austin Lehman. We'll see you later, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good night.